Okay, we are talking about cotton, the most <laughs> important fiber. Cotton is the most important fiber because uh, about 27% of all garments made in the world are made out of cotton. Now, like 27% isn't a big amount, but it is for one fiber. If you think about all of the fibers that we've talked about so far, and then we have a whole host of synthetic and manufactured fibers that we're gonna talk about for the rest of the semester. So cotton is the most important fiber. So let's dive in. Okay, saying it again, I've said it a bunch of times, but it just I just can't reiterate enough that cotton is the most important fiber. We're gonna, um, in just a minute, we're gonna dive into the science behind behind this fiber, but um, what it's composed of is a chemical molecular um, structure called cellulose. We're gonna talk about cellulose in, um, in just a minute, but like I discussed in the first part of the lecture, um, it's leading producer, the leading producers of cotton are China, India, Pakistan, and the US is still in the mix, it is still one of our major cash crops. So, um, you know, post industrial revolution, you know, at the beginning, at the dawn of our country, obviously we know um, that cotton was a cash crop that really, um, you know, funneled and financed um, the enslavement of Africans and the poverty <laughs> of Southern whites. So everyone seems to think that all Southern whites were uh, involved in slavery. They all weren't. Um, they all weren't enslavers, but they were all involved in the enslavement of African people. So, um, so yeah. So it's still a major fiber in the United States, but its history in the Southern U.S. is long and arduous. Here we go. The science. The science of of cotton. Uh, cotton is a. It's a plant. Uh, it's uh, what is known as a seed fiber, um, and um, it has strength. It has strength not only because of the stem and the root, but the pliability of the leaves and the protection and developing of the seeds. And in in many seed fiber plants, um, these bundles can be removed from the plant easily and economically be used in in textile production, in textile products, right? So these natural um, seed fibers are classified in a couple of different ways. And cotton is the seed fiber. The other ones are bast, um, which is stem, which is, is what linen is, um, or leaf, which is what bamboo is. And we'll, we'll talk, we've talked about linen already, and we'll, we'll talk about bamboo at some point, okay? So, you know, while hundreds of plant fibers have been used from human beings since you know they were first figured out how to work them into into fibers the one that has the most significance is our good friend cotton and as a seed fiber cotton grows within a pod uh, or what is known as a cotton boil um, from seeds and you know these fibers are are known as um, cellulotic and they differ in the percentage of cellulose that they have. So uh, linen is a cellulose fiber, um, sisal and bamboo are leaf fibers, um, and they have different cellulose um, cellulose compositions. But, you know, while the arrangement of those molecular structures in these fibers is, is similar in orientation and length, they still have different performance characteristics. And fibers that are made um, with, with these different types of fibers have a different appearance in hand, but have a really similar reaction to, to chemicals and require similar care. So if we look at cotton and linen, since we've talked about linen already in class, we look at cotton and linen, they have many of the same aesthetic characteristics. So they wrinkle easily, um, but they're, you know, they have good absorbency, they're good conductors of heat, um, they have a good hand, um, you know they're flammable, right? It's really important that they that they can burn. Um, but that is the difference between a seed fiber and what is known as a as a, a bass or a plant fiber. And um, you know all um, all of these cellulose these fibers have a have some similar similar characteristics, and we're going to talk about that on the next slide.
So again, cotton is a you know a cellular a cellulostic fiber. I couldn't get that out. A seed fiber that grows within the the pot or boil. And I'm comparing it to flax because we talked about flax already. Um, I, you know, some of the other um, cellulostic fibers are you know raffia or jute or sisal. So that they're they're here core, which core is usually um, used to make um, like rug like um you know, the rug that you, the, the doormat, sorry, I couldn't get the word out. So core is usually made, doormats are made out of that really rough fabric. Um, but cellulose, um, cellulose fibers contain carbon and hydrogen and um, they are, these carbon and hydrogens together are make a form of glucose, which you may know the word glucose because it's a form of sugar. Um, so these glucoses, uh, repeating are called cellulose, and that's what why they're called cellulose fibers. Okay, um, so these fibers um, have some chemical reactivity that is similar to what a glucose would have in science, and I'm not going to go into too much more into the chemistry. My husband's a chemistry professor, so he's really excited right now that I'm talking chemistry, um, but but essentially what you need to know about, about cotton in particular. So, you know, chemicals like chlorine bleach um, damage cellulose by attacking, um, by attacking the, the connectors, what, what, keeps, what keeps them together. So even though we use chlorine bleach on cotton items, if you use too much chlorine bleach on a cotton item, ultimately it will disintegrate. So you may have splash bleach <laughs> or gotten bleach on a cotton shirt or a pair of denim jeans and eventually gets a hole in it because the chlorine bleach does um does under uh, does degrade does degrade the the product does degrade the fiber okay so um you know even though cotton like i said is the most common fabric used in apparel and not just apparel we'll talk about that in a second is one of the most commonly used fibers is important um, that we understand the care of those fibers so we'll talk about those we'll talk about that in uh, the next few slides i've alluded to why uh, cotton is the most important fiber because it's used in 27 percent of of apparel items um, but apparel is not the only thing that it's used for and cotton is important because it's a cash crop for more than 80 countries and a cash crop just means something that they grow that they know they can sell that they're going to make money off of it's like a guarantee you are guaranteed if you grow cotton that that you're that you're going to sell it so you know it's while i said it's a cash crop still for the united states it's a cash crop for many countries and it's a cash crop for many emerging economies so when we look at places like pakistan and india Afghanistan and some of the African nations that um, that produce cotton, it's really important for their overall overall economy. And you know, cotton is also important because it's combination of, of properties. Um, you know, it's combination of you know comfort and breathability, um, pleasing appearance. You know, relatively easy care, relatively easy cost and durability makes it ideal for warm weather weather apparel and active wear and work clothes and upholstery and you know rugs and towels and bedding and non-apparel uses so think about it you know, cotton balls and q-tips and band-aids and gauze and you know cleaning wipes and um paper towels like all of those things have have cotton cotton as a as a component um and even though other fibers have encroached on the use of cotton, cotton still remains the most important. Um, and it's also a major um, fiber that is blended with other fibers um, like rayon and polyester. You know, you can blend cotton and silk, you can blend cotton and linen, you can blend cotton and wool. I mean, cotton really does blend with um, both natural and synthetic fibers. So um, it's, um, you know, you just can't underscore how how important cotton is.